Hey guys, Kingpin Light here. We got Scold the Album Documentary Episode 1. This was a suggestion in the comments, actually, and I I think I had seen it in the comments way earlier uh, before somebody had mentioned that this was existed, basically, but I had completely forgotten about it. It was kind of early when I was doing Vonda reactions, kind of like in the beginning of them. And, uh, and then I ended up doing the Documentary Episode 1 for Skull 2. Um, and then episode two for that documentary never came out. So then I saw this show up in the comments and I figured, let's go back and take a look at these two episodes, I think, that came alongside the Skull album and uh, see if we can get a little more insight into their process, them as a team, especially uh, earlier in their career, right? Because with Skull 2, he's already got a huge fan base. I think with Skull 1, he had a big fan base, but I don't think it was anywhere near as big. I think he blew up after this and after Time to Rise uh, being kind of a hit single at least internationally so let's go ahead and take a take a look now we'll start right away at closed captioning hd as well there we go Okay, so starting off with a little bit of a somber look where he was really channeling his feelings into this album. I actually just paused it to say that that little uh, piano background, like or orchestral sound, what is that from? That's not from one of his songs, right? I don't recall that sound. It sounded really cool. It sounded a little bit like a, like a movie soundtrack sort of thing. Anyway, let's keep going. I went immediately into like a hype thing. That's hilarious. Hmm. I remember Joe or J plus O. Oh, that's awesome. He um he did the same thing he did on just recently on the Skull uh, 2.5 or whatever it was called, episode 2.5, where he did a little teaser and then mentioned that Skull 2 was going to drop, or at least season one of Skull 2 was going to drop in July 1st. Uh, and I didn't know he had already done this before, where he's showcasing where he's been shown a whether it's reactions, at least in 2.5 was a bunch of reactioners. Reaction. I keep saying reactioners. Reactionists. Reactors. I don't know why I blanked for a second. Um, he showed a bunch of reactors uh, to his music, especially Time to Rise, I think, was a highlighted song. And then in this episode, the School of the Album documentary, he actually did the same thing. He's showing uh, where he's been shown other reactors, but also I think he showed himself uh, being called out in a couple of news um, programs or whatever they're called, channels. Uh, so that's interesting. That's cool. So it's like a recurring thing, which makes my statement that, hey, maybe next time around I'll be on that video. Once school three comes out, I'm going to be on it. Let's see. Anyway, let's go back a little bit. Wakanda the goat. Nice. Number one Cambodian Tom rapper, Bandai. Interesting, because I haven't actually seen any of those people in my suggestions. But I did see the people in the school 2.5 video on, on my suggestions. Oh, you're a little puppy. Hey, at game. I'll take a look after the videos and I don't know when this was uploaded just to see like the time frame between this and now. I think a year ago or something like that is maybe when it said it was uploaded. It might have been like two, maybe. No, I think a year. Hmm. Sneakerhead, huh? 
Did you face any challenges in the making of Skull the album? Okay, let's see. Or Skull album. Skull album. Three years for that album. That's crazy. I mean, it's not that crazy, but I, I don't know necessarily how many artists point out how long they've been making an album. We always just know the time difference between their last album and now, but that doesn't say anything, right? Like, especially big artists that aren't relying on the income from their albums and musics as much. Uh, you know, I'm thinking like superstars that have already earned a bunch of money. Um, they could be five years between an album, but they only worked on it for like six months. You know what I mean? They just took a break or whatever. So three years of actively working on an album. I think that's pretty impressive. Eighteen total songs. I'm curious to see if he keeps that number, if there's a significance in that number to him or if it's just... That's what yeah, it came up with, you know. So he kept working at it, added 10 more songs. That's wild. So Barmay came in handy for him. Really helped him out. Hey, Songa. Songha. We have a bad thing. Qualities. Quality. Not so many. 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 Not Cambodian artists wearing them, you know what I mean? I feel like I have. Was it, uh, or not just Cambodian, actually, uh, that's yeah, just a style, I think, out there, right, with you guys, uh, Thailand. Also, I think maybe it was one mil, I want to say, wears those sort of glasses. And then back home, we got, like, people like Chief Keef, I think, was wearing them for a while, like Young Thug. No, maybe not Young Thug. Who am I thinking of? I don't know if you guys know Young Lean, Drain Gang. Oh, he's not Drain Gang. He's Sad Boys. My bad. Uh, I think he wears them too. He's from uh, Finland? Or Norway, I think. Anxiety, depression, What's the third obstacle? Chen, Damn, that would have been crazy, huh? Um, I can understand that. What he's, especially here, he says later on, I found a way to relax. I keep uplifting myself, listening to myself, and he's going to continue. But that actually is a, a very relatable and real problem. And I think what he's talking about is burning out. You know, you, you put so many hours and work into something. And even if it's a passion or project that you really like or work, you know, anything. Um, if you don't take the time to like care for your, uh, especially your, your kind of stress and anxiety levels, you get burned out, right? You're just done. You, it doesn't even matter if it's something you love doing. You just, you need to get away from it. Can't, you know, can't focus. Um, and I, so that's relatable. I've definitely felt that, uh, mostly in work, right? Uh, not so much in like doing my hobbies like YouTube so far. I've been pretty good. Uh, you know, I record when I want to. I try and do it every single day, but every once in a while, if I'm not feeling it, I just don't do it, right? It's not a job, so I can do that. Uh, but with my regular work, uh, there, yeah, I mean, there's no, I can't just cancel, you know what I mean? I can't just be like, ah, not today. So uh, burning out, yeah, definitely felt that. Uh, but that would have been crazy, right, if he had never pushed past that point. Because, like, 
what what he's describing in the moment of time uh, that he's describing he hadn't necessarily i mean he might have already joined barmay but he hadn't necessarily crossed into like stardom right or gotten big or anything and he had this music and he just wasn't working out the way he wanted to and he almost quit and didn't release it and he wouldn't be where he is today right if he had quit at that point so i think it's a very good motivational story really for you or, or for myself or whoever right if you're doing something you're you put all this hard work and effort and you're just like you know what maybe i should just quit uh maybe you know take some time to relax you know what i mean uh, make sure it's not hurting you but maybe push past that and keep doing whatever you love to do and hell you could be as close as he was it seems to to reaching that point you know what i mean ហើយទៀងខ្លួនឯងមកចូលម្ដងនៅក្នុងផ្លូវនេះវិញ <coughs> 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 ចឹងវាធ្វើឲ្យអាល្បុមហ្នឹងខ្ញុំខ្ញុំដាក់គ្រប់រស់ជាទាំងអស់តាំងពីសាលាហាការជឿចាប់ពីជីវិតពិតគ
net control thing off. But if it's not parents that you have it out. I can net control shum thing off. I found great success in like. I mean net thing off here, but you mean the chip. Mentors in life too. Album school ni lang. Hey. But top mouth ku. Cruisa, cruisa thing off. Pa ma bom bom bị chơn ku. Pu quát ao tắc chất, ao cầm lăng chất dương. Hay nhung miên tắc chất nung phơi về ban đo lọ ngày. Cứ nhung mọc con bu quát khăng mình thêm. Okay, and I know there is a second. Uh... Oh, it's starting. Uh, so that's it right there. Episode two of it. Dope. So I'm definitely gonna check that out at some point. Uh, probably actually tomorrow night. Just have it be the next video I release. Um, yeah, I always love looking and seeing uh, different processes or, or mindsets that went into an album or song or whatever it is. Right, just sort of behind the scenes of music. Uh, so that was very interesting. And it gave me some sort of uh, jump off points to look into uh, Skull One, the album, ret you know, kind of retrospectively and to figure out some of the themes that were in there. Uh, if he was very specific there, too, and he said, you know, four tracks that really are going to cover uh, the love story within the, the larger storyline. So uh, and I think I already know what section of it it was, the four tracks, um, but it's right. It's a subplot. It's a, a B plot. So I got to take a look and see if I can find the A plot, the, the sort of the main plot line. Uh, but yeah, guys, I appreciate you watching. Uh, if you like that, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and uh, we're going to reach that 5K one of these days. So thanks for watching. Hope you have a good day. I will catch you guys on the next one.